level no living pilot's ever seen. This is gonna be good. Hey VJet Clean Team, it's Ryan. Welcome to my channel. This channel is everything aviation. We break down aviation videos and stories, and I use my experience as a former F-15E combat fighter pilot and F-16 Thunderbird pilot and current commercial pilot to tell you what I'm seeing. And this video is gonna be epic because we're gonna break down the newest Top Gun 2 trailer. And stay to the very end because I'll give my overall thoughts and maybe a little hint on what I think we're gonna see in the theaters when this thing releases. And hey, before we get going, if you would, just dominate that like button and maybe even that subscribe button. That would help me get this channel in front of more people and I would just greatly appreciate it. With that said, let's dive into some Top Gun. Here we go. In three, two, one. That low reference pass at the beginning is awesome. And if you've seen my reaction to the behind the scenes trailer, I talk a little bit about it, but essentially the film crew, when it flies over them, they're like, whoa, because when a fighter jet flies over you that close, you feel like a rattle in your chest. And if you've been to an air show, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't been or you haven't been in a while, this is your reminder to get that feeling again soon. So I like in Top Gun how they bring in awesome cars like that Ford Bronco and motorcycles because as aviators and fighter pilots, I think we just have a special place in our heart for machines that are very capable and work really well. What I saw in a lot of fighter squadrons is that we all liked a lot of off-road capable vehicles. And I think it's because off-roading and 4 x 4 you can kind of go wherever you want. There's not as many rules as being on the road, but don't get me wrong, fighter pilots, we love sports cars as well. I would say the Ford GT would be my favorite. So I always liked checking out the Baja 1000 or doing the flyover for the Daytona 500. There's just something about it when you climb up into a fighter jet. You're essentially threading that sweet spot where you're kind of the perfect combination of a human and a machine. And you're trying to make that machine an extension of your body. And so when we climb back down out of that jet, that doesn't just go away. What do we have here? Yeah, here I thought we were special. Fellas, this here's Bagman. Hangman. Oh, whatever. I love the character development already because to me, the hangman guy, he's essentially like a younger Iceman. And what I saw a lot in fighter squadrons, the people that are kind of competing for the top two spots, it's usually someone who's like Maverick, who's very likable, really good at their job, but they're kind of a little more chill. They're not like in everybody's face, like telling everybody like, I'm going to be the best. They just kind of prove that with their actions. Then someone like Hangman, who's usually really good at their job as well, but they also kind of want to climb the ranks and they're usually telling people like, hey, I'm the best. And at the end of the day, those two types of personalities just push each other and drive each other forward. What the kind of mission is this? Everyone here is the best there is. Who the hell are they gonna get to teach us? Captain Pete Maverick Mitchell. Let me be perfectly blunt. Here we have Maverick racing the F-18 and it's really cool whenever I see like a motorcycle or a car doing a race against a fighter jet, what I notice is the motorcycle or car definitely wins off the line. They get to jump on the fighter jet because the fighter jet engines have to spool up and that takes a little bit. So the fighter jet needs to get up to around 100 or so knots for those jet engines to really kick in and once that happens, then you accelerate like that. And then especially when you get the gear up and the flaps up, that means the jet is clean and there's nothing slowing it down. There's no chance anything's gonna catch up with it at that point. You are not my first choice. You are here at the request of Admiral Kazansky, AKA Iceman. He seems to think that you have something left to offer the Navy. What that is, I can't imagine. With all due respect, sir, I'm not a teacher. Just wanna manage the expectations. So it's kind of what I said before, where Maverick and Iceman, they're very different personalities, but they have a healthy respect for each other. It's kind of like game recognizes game. And this other Admiral can't really understand it. But the fact that Maverick and Iceman got to fly together, Iceman calls him up for this high stakes mission because he's seen Maverick's act. He knows that, yeah, you know, he's not the traditional fighter pilot, but what he lacks in that he makes up for with like raw skill and talent. And this other Admiral doesn't really know that. And he just sees Maverick as maybe even a bit of a threat because Maverick's not taking the standard path. What the hell? Good morning, aviator. 
Rogers. This is your captain speaking. So that close pass there when he flies in between those two jets, that's what's called a bubble violation. You can't go within 500 feet during training and that just keeps jets from smacking into each other. But this is symbolic because it's basically showing that Maverick is gonna push these aviators to the limit and get them prepped for this high stakes mission. And we're off. Here we go. In three, two, one. We're going into combat on a level no living pilot's ever seen. I want to talk about that maneuver that the F-18 did right there. That's called the Cobra Maneuver, and F-18s can't really do that, but an F-22 can. So I think it's cool that they're actually representing that and bringing it into the movie. But essentially what happens during a Cobra Maneuver is the front jet immediately stalls itself. And in order to do that, the jet needs to have a lot of ability to create thrust that keeps it from falling down. So it's a high thrust to weight ratio is what that's called. That means it has more thrust than it does weight. It also is post stall maneuvering. And what that means is it's essentially using thrust vectoring to keep it from falling to one side or the other. And it's just highly, highly maneuverable. Not even him. You think up there you're dead, believe me. My dad believed in you. I'm not going to make the same mistake. So I actually like how they're bringing in some of this drama here because as you can imagine in fighter squadrons, there's a lot of type A personalities. The stakes are really high. Lives are on the line. So there's going to be drama. But something that I liked about the fighter squadrons that I was in for the most part was you could speak truth to power and you could say like, look, I'm concerned about this. I think we need to do this better. I think this could be done in a different way. And a lot of times leadership was receptive when it came to the actual flying part of things. Because hopefully in every fighter squadron out there, when you get in the briefing room, when you're up in the jet flying and then you're debriefing, rank comes off. And no one's pulling rank. Ultimately at the end of the day, it's just about making each other better. And that helps reinforce confidence in the other pilots. And I think that's what Maverick's gonna do eventually because ultimately I think he's that type of character who wants to treat people like people and isn't gonna treat them like a cog in the wheel. And then we see that F-18 do that tight pass through that bridge and that's called a knife edge pass. What happens when you go into knife edge is you have to have your nose up because without the wings level, you're gonna to start to sink because there's nothing really to create lift. So you're gonna need a lot of altitude. So you probably need a little more than you had there. And as soon as you went through that gap, I mean, that gap was tight, don't get me wrong. As soon as you went through that, you're gonna to have to roll out, plug it into AB and get some altitude because you're gonna lose altitude throughout the whole time that your jet's like this. But this is gonna be awesome to see in theaters. Someone's not coming back from this. Those are your pilots. Anything happens to them. You'll we'll never forget yourself. No turning back now. So they're obviously going into a really intense scenario. Maverick says someone's not gonna come back from this. And then I see this jet whiz past the cockpit. And at first I thought it might be an F-14, but I slowed it down and looked at it. And I looked at some of the identifying characteristics. And this is something that you'll do as an aviator when you're going through flight school. I mean, some guys would like tape up pictures of enemy aircraft in their apartments or whatever so that they could study it while they were just walking around. But what I saw on that one was an identifying feature that's like this stinger type thing that comes out between the engines. And then I looked at the shape of the wings and to me, it actually looks like a Su-57. And on this channel, I actually did a breakdown of an F-22 versus a Su-57. So check that out if you want. But I think it's really interesting that that jet is in here. Jeez. Having any fun yet?
some of my overall thoughts are the fact that they're using actual fighter jets for this. I mean, Tom Cruise is in the back of one of these things. All the other aviators are in the back of these things. And you can see at the end there when they do that ridge crossing, the G-force kind of pulling down on his face, which I think is just cool. And it's something that just can't be simulated. So I'm really glad that they're actually in fighter jets. And then I think that the character development is actually pretty good so far from what I can tell from the trailers. I mean, they're representing the different personalities and a bit of the drama that you would see in the fighter squadrons relatively well so far. So I'm excited to see how this plays out. I'm excited to go see this thing in theaters. You guys should definitely go check it out when it releases. And please, please, please go ahead and smash and dominate that like button for me. Maybe even subscribe. See you guys in the next video. Have a great day.